Hi, I'm Timothy Hogan. I'm going to talk today about Esoteric Landmarks of Denver, Colorado, Part 2. So if you didn't see Part 1, you can go back and watch Part 1. We're going to watch Part 2 today. We're going to cover the Wellington Web Building, the uh, City and County Building of Denver, which includes the Courthouse, uh, Civic Center Park, as well as the Denver Mint, and a few other landmarks that are within that area. I will say that uh, in the video, I do talk about um, Denver Mayor Wellington Webb. He was a former mayor of Denver. He was the, um, he used to be in the Colorado House of Representatives, and he was also the um, mayor of Denver. He was the first African American or black mayor of Denver, serving from 1991 to 2003. Uh, later on in the video, I say he was governor. He was never governor. He was just mayor in, in the House of Representatives. But he was instrumental in um, uh, helping to set up Denver International Airport, which we will cover in part three video. So uh, today for part two video, uh, come with me and we'll take a look at these areas all that are, that are all within, I'd say, a 10-minute walking distance uh, from each other uh, around Civic Center Park. Welcome to part two of Esoteric Landmarks in uh, downtown Denver. We're going to start out here at the Wellington Webb Building, which is the uh, municipal building for the city and county of Denver. Uh, Wellington Webb was, uh, uh, you know, former prominent uh, mayor and uh, governor of the city. He was also a Prince Hall um, Freemason and uh, helped to uh, get Denver International Airport created. Uh, out in front of the Wellington Webb building, we have uh, this giant statue, which if you look at the sides of it, you can see it's the profile. We'll come around here. See it's the profile of a person. And then we have the club line hanging down in the center of it. And if you look at the ground here, here you can see the old old map of the city uh, which they have on the coated on the ground the floor on the roof also the floor you can see the old map then Uh, this is the cornerstone of the um, of the building, which was uh, laid by the Grand Lodge of Colorado. So uh, it was uh, uh, dedicated by the Grand Lodge of Colorado. So this is the first stop, and if you look back at the uh, the, the thing over here, you'll notice that uh, the monument, you'll notice that there's also strings of circles around the monument. So the plumb line points to an area that's the point within the circle uh, in the monument, which is also an esoteric symbol for the sun and for gold. And hence why there's the gold plumb line hanging down in the center. So this is the first monument. Let's move on to, we're going to move on around the corner and uh, there's some more things that we want to see. So, so as we move around the corner from the plumb line that's hanging down, here you can see there is a rough ashlar, a giant rough ashlar that's put out. And if we turn around over this way, come around this way, come around this way you can see there's a Perfect action. So, to do that, somebody put a can of Coke on it. 
because they had the combination of the rough ashlar and the perfect ashlar. Uh, and then if you move over here, it's kind of a mess, but uh, we also have the black cubes and the white cubes, which represent the uh, black and white voting um, cubes that, that are found in, a, in a, any Masonic ballot box to, to uh, vote somebody in it. We'll move on to the next one. Here we are on the southeast corner of the Wellington Web Building. You'll notice we have another rough ashlar. And as we turn over here, we can see a perfect ashlar that's, that's made. So same thing, the, the ashlars are being emphasized, which of course is something you find in any Masonic lodge. Walk over here. So this is Civic Center Park, and as we look through the arch, you notice the big arch with the keystone up front, and as you look through the arch across the way, you'll see the library, and on top of the library is a pyramid, and on top of the pyramid is the, uh, the Technus of Pythagoras, with the one, two, three, and four windows, forming the Tetractus of Pythagoras. Now we're going to walk through the arch, and you're going to see there's some pillars with globes on them. We'll go do that. Okay, here we are. We walked through the arch that I just showed you. And if you see behind me, you see this is Civic Center Park. You'll notice that there's the two pillars with the globes on them which of course you find in every Masonic Lodge, but here we have them in the center of the city. Uh, then straight ahead is the library with the um, Tectractus Pyramid on top. Next to it is the Art Museum. Come around this way. If you look over here, this is the uh, Art Museum. It looks like a castle. And we'll, we'll go over to the center of the park and, and so we can orientate ourselves some more. Okay, here we are in the center of um, the park. And if we look to the east, we find the Capitol building representing wisdom. If we turn around and look to the west, we have the courthouse representing strength and law. And then if we look to the south, we have the art museum and the library representing beauty. So these are the three principal directions that you find within every Masonic Lodge, which is orientated uh, according to wisdom, strength, beauty and they align the architecture of the government buildings to uh, represent this fact. And then of course we have the pillars with the globes on them as well. Uh, so it's kind of a unique aspect of the Denver layout here in Civic Center Park. Wellington Web Building. Uh, you can see the, uh, the monument with the plumb line hanging in the, uh, the center of the head. And by the way, that spot where the plumb line is hanging is actually uh, where the um, pineal and the pituitary glands reside, which is, you know, has esoteric secrets. In the I will also point out that west of here are the mountains of Colorado. Every mountain that's named after a person that's over 14,000 feet here in the Colorado Rocky Mountains uh, were all named after a prominent Freemason. Uh, the most famous, of course, is Pike's Peak, which was named after Zebulon Pike, who was Albert Pike's nephew. And he's the one who uh, Pike's Peak is named after. 
That's also where America the Beautiful was was written on top of the song America the Beautiful. Okay, now we're at the Mint, the Denver Mint, where anytime you see uh, currency with a D on it, it stands for Denver. That means it was minted here in Denver. And behind me is a, uh, this is a uh, little time capsule. Uh, on it is actually a design that was minted by uh, Thomas Jefferson when he was president. He's the one who ordered this to be minted. And what it does is it shows uh, a hand grip between the colonials and the natives. And they're giving a special Masonic hand grip. And it represented this secret alliance between the Templar tradition, uh, of which Freemasonry came out of, and the natives that were already residing here. And see, it says, peace and friendship. There's a peace pipe and a, um, a tomahawk. And underneath it is a triangle. And underneath that is the two clasped hands giving the the grip. So that was that was minted by um, Thomas Jefferson's the one who ordered that to be minted, and they have a dedication to it here uh, at the at the mint itself. And we'll go look at the front of the mint. All right, here's the. Uh, used to be the, the front door to the mint. Now it's around the corner. You have to go through security. But you can see it says the Department of the Treasury, 1789. Of note, on the Treasury seal, which is on the doors, of course you have the balances that are used to, to weigh the money. There's also the key. And then there's a chevron, which is the um, in the form of a square, which was the, uh, you know, a symbol of mastery within Freemasonry. That was all incorporated into the design of the treasury. Here's another monument that's near the Capitol building. Uh, as you can see, it's the Ten Commandments. But what I really want to point out is if you zoom in close, you'll see that there's the eagle with the American flag. Above it is the um, all-seeing eye in the triangle. And then here you have, on either side, you have uh, Phoenician. So it's the Phoenician writing um, representing the tradition that the, uh, really of the Phoenician Canaanites of which uh, Hebrew evolved out of. So this is the, uh, the memorialized here. And of course, if you look down here, there's the Stars of David. And this this was created by the Fraternal Order, Order of Eagles. So there you go. Okay, and here we are back at the plumb line. Uh, as I mentioned on the ground, there are these maps. And they show the map layout of downtown Denver, uh, in particularly how it fits within a three, four, five triangle of Pythagoras, which of course matches the Tetractus that's on the pyramid on the library. Um, and we'll show a Google Maps picture of downtown so you can see the, the layout of how all the streets turn in order to form this three, four, five triangle. Behind me, by the way, this is Colfax Avenue, which is the longest avenue in the nation. And it actually goes all the way west to Lookout Mountain. And up on top of Lookout Mountain is Buffalo Bill's grave. And of course, Buffalo Bill was also a prominent Freemason. He was, he's buried here in uh, Colorado and uh, the Grand Lodge of Colorado will regularly do, re-perform his Masonic funeral service um, each year. 
and uh, it should be noted that he's buried under a bunch of quartz crystal several several feet down like 20 feet down with a bunch of railroad ties and everything else on top of them to ensure that Nebraska wouldn't steal his body uh, because Buffalo Bill's ranch was actually in Nebraska in North Platte and uh, they so they felt like they were entitled to his body but of course Buffalo Bill performed out here in Colorado the most this is where he died and this was his where most of his life was and so uh, that's why he's buried here so a little bit of controversy but he's still buried there on top of Lookout Mountain in Colfax Avenue you take it west it just goes all the way up there to uh, to where Buffalo Bill is buried Thank you for going on this journey with me. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, next week, uh, soon, we will post part three, which will cover Denver International Airport, uh, the Denver Airtropolis area out near Denver International Airport, and some monuments within Aurora, Colorado, which border Denver and Denver International Airport. So look forward to seeing you soon and thanks for watching.